We are here at Tate Modern today for a very exciting opening. Labina Hamid opens here today yeah. um, and it's going to be her biggest show ever. Mm. I'm here with the assistant curator of the show and this is what you've kind of been working towards, Amrita, for the whole time you've been here at Tate. Yeah, yeah. It's been very emotional to see it filled with people as well and for there to be just sounds of voices and people conversing and reacting to the artworks around them and that's exactly what we wanted. So it's really about the audience being the most important person in the room. It's not necessarily about Lebena's life story, but it's about opening it up so we can have these conversations and for us to actually think about the changes that we want to make in our lives. So it is has that existential level to it too. And the pictures, some of the pictures are designed so that we're sort of an audience member. Yeah. So that we're kind of sitting at the table yeah. involved in the conversation. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So as you can see, often there are these empty tables. There are also these moments of gathering between women in particular who are strategizing and debating. But yeah, you can always stand in front of the canvas and you see there is a place for you. She says that her art begins when we, the audience, first see it and there yep. are pictures on display here and pieces of work that were designed and created in lockdown that are being shown for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the final paintings room, which is framed by the question, what happens next, which is a big question for us all. Um, there are paintings that she's painted from 2020 to 21 and they still very much carry the themes that she's been exploring throughout her entire career. So as I mentioned earlier, women strategizing, planning, thinking about future cities and what they would like that to look like. But also there are um, interactions between men. So there's one wall where there's three canvases between couples of men who are in sort of awkward tense moments where they're in these moments of indecision planning what to do next whether it's to go have dinner or which club to go to these kind of what seem to be innocuous questions but actually could have a massive impact on what happens in their life some of the themes that we're looking at here is how the built environment history personal relationships and conflict shape the lives we lead mm. tell us a bit more about that that <laughs> meaty quote that's <laughs> So when you enter into the first room, the first question that you uh, are confronted with is, we live in buildings, we live in clothes, do they fit us? So a big question is, um, the kinds of spaces that occupy our bodies, are they actually meant for us? Are they meant for our imagination and our creativity to be free and for us to thrive? Or is there a way for us to kind of have power over that and to think about what kind of spaces are built for us to have those kinds of conversations. And we look at this installation called A Blue Grid Test, which uh, is a very recent work from 2020. She uses, she creates an installation of 64 objects and loads of them are household objects. So ones that you would find in your own home, like clocks, paper bags, bed heads, but then she repurposes them and paints these amazing patterns from all over the world. So she also just reminds us that these objects that we have in our houses also tell these stories too. That installation moves across a couple of different walls. How do you go to then recreate it in a venue like the Tate? So initially when it was commissioned um, in an organization called Veals in Brussels, it was for a much smaller space. So there was actually a, just a very continuous line. But here, because the, the room was larger, we de decided to just expand it. And um, so as you can see, it's not continuous. There are these white um, wall spaces. But rather than, you know, we're actually excited by that because we have a different configuration of the speakers too so when you walk into the room you're almost like embraced by the sound and you hear Lebena's voice at ear level and you start to think about the memories that she's telling about the color blue and she says it in different languages and then you start to think about your own associations with that color so those spaces are really there for you to project your own stories. Her mum is a textile, was a textile designer mm -hmm. so do we, we, do we see like kind of references to her, her mum's influence on her throughout? Absolutely, I think the way that Lebena puts color together is very much in the same kind of sensibility you would find in fabric 
fabric making. For example, we see these bright oranges and luminous greens. You don't see that anywhere other than in fabrics and textiles, but also the way that she approaches pattern is very you know, reminiscent of textile making. And also the way that she paints curving buildings and the way that the sound wraps around you is very much like how fabric wraps around you. So I think the movement of fabric is very much present in the way that she paints everything. Amrita, thank you very much. Thank Talking you. Talking to Australia today. Good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you so much. And congratulations. Thank you.